<laughs> well, would you open your Bibles with us to uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5. Um, I'm forcing myself to turn here because I want to get to it, but we've been on this series. Uh, anybody know what the series we've been on has been? Make room for love. And I know it seems like, well, how long have we been on this? Even my daughter, Kizzy, was like, Daddy, how long have we been on this? And the thing is, it's not because I don't have more material. As a matter of fact, I've long overcome the fear of repetition. Uh, growing up in the home that I did and having my dad as my pastor for so many years, my dad would teach on, the, uh, on a subject for like weeks upon weeks upon, sometimes one subject could last a whole year. And even then I got a chance to travel on the road with dad Hagen, uh, brother Kenneth e. Hagen, and he would teach some of the same stuff over and over again out here, some of the same stories. But it's amazing to me that when I was ready to receive that I would, I would hear something new and something different each time. And it would even make you think that maybe they don't have more material, but it's, uh, as a pastor, I've come to realize it's not that. As a matter of fact, there's so many different things that we want to preach and teach. As you can tell, I'm talking fast because I want to get this thing out. But the thing is, is that really, it's just that there's some things that we just have to get into. You know what I mean? I'm from the Caribbean. You understand what I'm saying? So when we eat chicken, we don't just eat chicken. If, if it's a good stew chicken, you, Carly, you know what I'm talking about. If it's a good stew chicken, we don't leave meat on those bones. You know what I'm saying? It's a sin. It is. It is, it is exactly that. No, there's not a piece. Some of you, I know, we even go to the cartilage. I know some of you not, don't get with that, uh, but, it, you know, that little crunch with it, with the juice, you know what I'm saying? And then not just that, but then we'll even chew on the bone because the Bible talks about even to the bones and the marrow. Ha! Thank you, Jesus. If, if it's made right, if it's cooked, you know what I'm saying? Some people think that, oh, I've just had enough, but no, us that know how to eat, we know there's still some good stuff in there. And so sometimes the word is just like that, that even though you may think, and uh, I almost disowned one of my kids because I saw they left uh, so much chicken on a bone. I'm like, you are not an Estrada. What is happening? I know you are. Yeah, I thought about spanking them. But <laughs> you will not leave this meat on this chicken. Somebody paid good money for that chicken, and that somebody is me. But the thing is, it's because you know you know how much good stuff there is in it. I know some of you are like, no, that's not me, Pastor. I can't get with that. But at least with the word of God, would you say that that's the way that you are? Yeah. Amen. It's not, in other words, I'm not one of those that just want to come to church and just get somebody preach me happy and then I go leaving a whole bunch of meat on the bone still. No, I want to partake. I want to taste every single thing that, is, that, that, that it, it has for me. I mean, I am a foodie. A vacation is not a good vacation if there's not good food. So texture is important and flavor is important and colors are important and the aroma is important. I want the whole experience. And if I spend money and it was not good, if it wasn't for the love of God that constrained me, I would throw it back at them. But I can't do that because the love of God is on the inside of my heart, right? Praise the Lord. Amen. So... As we're talking about this, I want you to understand this because it's so easy to reject the watering process, but there's some more that God wants us to get out of this. Now, there's times where I want to say, now, Lord, can I, can I take a break and teach on something else? I'll be honest with you, there's times that I do. But here's what I'm sharing with you, and I'm sharing this with you because sometimes, because, well, we've been on this for 10 weeks, Pastor, how much more can we get? Well, it's the love that surpasses all understanding. And so we could actually spend the rest of our lives on this and not exhaust the subject because there are so many dimensions to this love that God has for us, right? And Jesus said this in John chapter 15. He said, just as, um, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. John 15 verse 9, he said, abide in my love. Abide in my love. That means you don't just visit it every now and then. When you abide, you, that's your residence. You stay there. Last week, I wished that was my residence. I, uh, somebody said, Pastor, did you want to come back? I said, if it was not for my family and the ministry, no. I was ready to just pick up and stay. How much it cost? Okay, I'll go back home. <laughs> but here's the thing is that um, he said, abide in my love. Abide in my love. 
Can you put that up for me real quick? John 15 verse, verse 9. I really want to get to verse 10. And he says, I'm saying these things to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. 1 John 15 verse 9 uh, and verse 10, actually. Uh, he said, so I'm teaching you these things. So there's a purpose why Jesus was teaching these things to us. Now, what was the purpose? So that what? His joy. Not First John. John. Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 9. Um, that his joy may be in you. Verse 10 now. If you came up, uh, verse 11, sorry. Uh, verse 11. Yep, there we go. Nope, verse 11. There we go. These things... I have spoken to you. That's my fault. I should have given them the scriptures ahead of time. These things I've spoken to you. So why is he speaking these things? So that his joy. How many think it's important that his joy remains in you? Yeah. Right? I mean, we, we can experience happiness. We can experience bliss. Pastor Lynette has been living that for 17 years of her life. Right? And she's been, um, I don't know why 17. But... She's been experiencing that for so long, but there's something that's even greater than the bliss and the happiness that she's been living in, but there's a joy that comes from him. Hey, here's the thing that I know. As happy as my wife is, as she walks back in the room, as blissful as she is, here's what I do know, is that she doesn't get her joy from me. Are y'all hearing me? Like, I, I mean, she, doesn't even, she doesn't even say that uh, I make her happy. She doesn't say that. She, she doesn't say, honey, you make me so happy. She just say, you add to my joy. Because, in other words, with or without you, I just want you to know, I'm still going to be good. Yeah. And the same thing applies to me. Like, babe, if you try to leave, I mean, I'm going to come with you, you know. <laughs> We're going to leave all these people, <laughs> and I'm coming with you. But I just want you to know, I will be good. I will be fine. Friends, as much as I love you, family, I've been doing this for this church for 18 years. And people come, and people go, and I'm still okay. Because I don't find my validation. And can I be real with you? I got to say this because a lot of pastors... The things that I'm teaching you applies to everybody. I can't tell you how many pastors battle depression and battle certain things because they find their validation in the numbers. They find their validation in, in how good, like if they didn't preach a good message, if the church didn't kind of get with them that Sunday, their whole week is messed up. Are you hearing me? So you, you aren't the only ones. And the temptation is there for anybody. I'll be real with you. There's been times I've come out here on this stage and it seemed like everybody just ain't here. And I have like literally felt like walking off the stage. Y'all see those times where I've played around? There were times where I was really about to do it and the Lord, nope. <laughs> Lord, they don't care, obviously. Y'all good? Y'all okay with I just be a little transparent? And so we deal with stuff too, but here's the thing is that my joy, I had to realize that my joy doesn't come from you. My joy is not affected whether you fall asleep on my message or not. My joy is not, doesn't, you know, whether you, you, you playing with somebody or whatever the case is, my joy comes from him. My validation comes from him. It's not based upon you. And the thing is, is that he's teaching. He said, I'm saying these things that my joy may remain in you, but that also that your joy may be full. So there are people that have different levels of joy. And if your joy level is low, your joy, if your joy level is low, it's because you haven't fully really grasped that he loves you as much as his father loves him. Y'all with me? And so we've been teaching along these lines, and, and people have been being helped uh, that's been dealing with anxiety and all these different things. And I, I just believe that the power of God is available to break that off of anybody. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not knocking therapy. I'm not knocking uh, medication. I'm not knocking all those different things. You be led by the Spirit of God in, in what you do. Uh, listen, it's okay to talk to somebody. You don't have to feel. I know people used to shame people before for talking to people. We have Christian therapists. 
and psychologists and all those different things. So I'm not knocking that whatsoever. I am saying, however, is that you can, you can find such security in the love that God has for you that it will drive out every form of fear, every form of depression, every form of anxiety. It will drive it out. Because the Bible tells us, your Bible says that perfect loves cast out all fear. Now last week, we went to 1 Peter chapter 5. Um, let's start in verse, uh, let's just read verse 7. How about that? No, let's read verse 6. Okay, we'll read verse 5. 1 Peter, I'm sorry. Yeah, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. I'll, I'll go there. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility, right? So we can be clothed with humility. Amen. And we don't think of humility like the world thinks of humility. Okay. I don't have time to get into it. But it says this, that God resists the what? The proud. God don't like pride. He resists the proud, but he gives grace. He gives empowerment. He gives ability to those that are humble. And, and can I be real with you? Every single one of us still has pride to deal with. It just shows up in different forms. You know how I know that? Just let's be honest. Somebody tell you something. Somebody tell you, uh, you, you can do this this way. You're like, I already know how to do that. Where'd I come from? That's not just because you're smart. It's because you don't want to feel dumb. Oh, come on. Your spouse trying to help you with something? But honey, baby, I already know. Where'd I come from? Got tickled. Uh, hey, hey, how do how you know that, Pastor? Because every marriage deals with it. Yeah. You ain't some special case. Every single one of us. Yeah. Even your little perfect Pastor Lynette, she deal with it too. <laughs> but God, I try to tell her, honey, God gives grace to the humble. <laughs> if you just get submissive, baby, if you just... But he resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. He goes on to say this, therefore... So if he, if he gives, if he resists the proud and gives grace to the humble, therefore I'm saying to you, to do what? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. That, why? Now why should you humble yourself in, in, under the mighty hand of God? So that he can exalt you in due time. Which tells us that God actually wants you to be exalted. I know religion has told you this, that, oh no, brother. No, you don't want to be exalted. You don't want to exalt yourself. But God actually wants, he actually likes to lift you up, yeah. put you up so everybody can see, look how good I take care of my kids. Yeah. I just, you see that? Look at that. You see how good I present them? Yeah. Now what happened to your other kids? Oh, those, they're full of pride. <laughs> so we're still waiting on them to just yield and submit to my way of doing things. And then guess what? In due time, I'll also lift them up. There are some people that aren't as qualified as others, but yet they're holding positions. Not because they're smarter than somebody else. Some of y'all holding some of those positions. Because you've learned to yield. You've learned to submit. You've learned to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. But it goes on to say, it didn't finish, but verse 7, remember the Bible wasn't written in chapters and verses, so he says, um, casting all your... So, so, therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. How do we get there? Casting all of your... Huh? Your cares upon him, for he cares for you. So therefore, if you're carrying cares and anxiety, could it be that it's rooted in pride? Where, no, Lord, I have to carry this. I have to do this. Nobody else cares about this. And so, uh, you know, oh, you just so carefree. And, and, the, and pastor could say what he wants. He don't know the type of life that I'm living. And blah, 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 blah. Oh, I wish he would trade lives with me. I wish I could sometimes. Because you just have your bills to deal with. 
I got my bills. I got church bills. I got, I got other people's bills that come and, and, and all these different things. I got my challenges. I have your challenges. And you might think you're just one person, but I have other you challenges. And so I definitely have to learn how to cast all my care upon him. So I'm not going to carry my cares. And can I, can I say this? I apologize ahead of time. I'm not going to carry your care either. But it is a challenge. There is a deep concern that comes upon us still. Paul said that. He said, what comes upon me daily, what comes upon me daily, the same Paul that said, be anxious for nothing. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he said, on top of in the perils of robbers, in the perils of countrymen, in the perils of all these different things, in, in shipwrecks and, and being stoned, what comes upon me daily is my deep concern for the churches. So even when Paul is teaching us uh, in Philippians chapter 4 about uh, rejoicing the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, Philippians 4, 6. He's not teaching from a place of like, oh, he don't, you don't understand, Paul. I think sometimes people think that when preachers are preaching the word of God, we are like, we, we're just so dotish. I know that's a Caribbean term. Is that a Caribbean term? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, somebody like dotish? I've never heard that before. <laughs> is that a Trini term? Uh, my mom is tr Trinidadian, so I just, that's how she says it. Boy, stop acting so dotish. Uh, <laughs> and so here's the thing, is that he absolutely cares for you. Passion reads it this way. Verse 6, it says, if you bow low in God's awesome presence... He will eventually exalt you as you leave the timing in his hands. Verse 7 says, pour out all your worries and stress upon him and leave them there for he always tenderly cares for you. Can you put it up in the Amplified Classic for me, please, real quick, because I don't have it here. Um, but I, I do want to look at it. Amplified Classic of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Uh, it says this, casting what? The whole of your care. That means he doesn't want us to keep not even a single ounce of it. Well, Pastor, you don't understand what, what I'm feeling in my body. You know, you don't know what. Uh, oh, I can understand. I know what it's like to go through such pain that you feel like you can't even think. And so I've told somebody, hey, take whatever medication you got to take until you get to a point where you could actually believe. It may not be God's best. But it's something that can keep you here long enough to where we can get you to a place of actually receiving and believing what God has for you. Y'all follow me? Yeah. Casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns once and for all. That includes your children. I'll say it again, because I know we might say, hey, amen, amen, but, but you're not supposed to carry anxiety even for your kids. And here, here's, here's the thing, and I've mentioned this before, is that sometimes, because we were all kids at one point, and so we know what we dealt with, we know the type of life that we lived, and so a lot of times we, we try so hard not to make the same mistakes that our parents did that, of course, eventually we end up making our own mistakes. And it's just different mistakes. Let me encourage you is that as much as you love your child, God loves your child more. As well as you can take care of your child, God can take care of your child even better. This does not excuse you from your responsibility. Are you all with me? But God still doesn't want you being anxious for your kids. Oh, you expect me? I, I mean, uh, you just don't even sound, you sound so stupid right now, Pastor. I'm not, I'm just telling you the word. Mm -hmm. Casting all, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns 
once and for all. Well, how can I do that? Why would I do that? Cast it who? On him. He has the ability to carry it. You weren't designed to carry it. Your body was not designed. It does not function. It releases all kinds of bad, toxic uh, chemicals in your body when you put up with this stuff. This is why even laughing will help. I mean, y'all, for those of you that remember a few years ago when I dealt with that back injury, uh, Miss Trina Hankins, so sweet, she said, Kenneth, just laugh. And I didn't want to hear that at the point. I was like... <laughs> I mean, I'm in pain. I, I want to cry. And there were times where I was crying. I mean, because I listened to her. I was like, because I, I know it's true, Lord. Yeah, I know it's true. Because even laughing helps the healing process just naturally. Yes. And so there were times I'm on the floor, can't walk, and I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm trying to fool my body. I'm not crying. I'm laughing. <laughs> but the thing is, cast it on him because he can carry it. And not just that. Why would we do that? Because he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. You all with me? This is so simple but we miss it. Casting all of your cares. Roll it over on him because he actually cares about you aff affectionately. You know, there's people that you care about, but there's, there's those. Y'all, I care about you. I do. But man, that Lynetta Schroeder girl, I care about her affectionately. You know what I mean? I just, I mean, I know I'm the man, but boy, the woman got some power because I care about her affectionately. I, okay, can I say this? Um, let me see how to say this. I'm going to pick my words wisely because my mom is in here and all that. Uh, I don't hate anybody, right? But even if I don't hate anybody, I can still kill somebody. You know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm just be real with you. If somebody was trying to attack my wife, I don't hate that person, but I will kill them if they were trying to, can I say this in, on camera? And can y'all take this? A pastor. It's not from a place of, it's self-defense. And if you don't take care of your home, you are worse than an infidel. So I'm saying to you, if somebody tried to do, mom, you okay? You okay? All right. So even, I mean, and an anointing will come upon me to find out all kinds of different ways that I could do it. <laughs> and I'll feel no guilt about it because it wasn't out of hatred, but because I care for her affectionately that if someone was trying to kill her, I would kill them and not even feel guilt. And love covers a multitude of sins. Y'all with me? Some of y'all are like, I can't, I can't get with that, Pastor. I can't get with it. Just chew on it for a little bit. But I care for her affectionately. I, I was sharing with uh, the first service today that a lot of times, because the Bible does say this, that love that is perfected casts out all fear. Fear causes torment. The love of God towards us, when that love is perfected, when that love becomes mature, it has the power to drive out every single kind of fear. Every anxiety, every, every form of depression, every form of fear. Y'all with me? And it comes from a place of when you know the love that God has for you, it makes it easier for you to believe. Because again, faith works by love. I know we said all these different things before. But um, some years ago, my wife, she determined, because uh, my daughter Kizia, she had almost drowned twice when she was a um, 
when she was a little girl. And so after that second time, uh, a special anointing came upon my wife and she put her finger in my face and she said, let me tell you something. She said, none of my kids are going to drown. You understand me? She said, we will put them in swim class. And I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and so we did that. We did it with Kizia twice. We did it with um, Ethan, right? And then uh, by the time Cole came around, I said, I'm not putting him in swim class. Because what I found out was I'm paying them for me to teach them, for, for, for them to teach me how to teach my kids how to swim. And I know how to swim, and I can teach my kids how to swim. I, I went ahead with the swim class, paying those hundreds of dollars. I'm not knocking it. Take swim class if you have to. I think my mom took a swim class. Can you swim, mom? You see? You might need to go back. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyways, um, so with, with Cole, I remember, um, this is just a few years ago, he could swim. I would see him swimming in the shallow end, right? And he's comfortable in the shallow end because he could touch. As long as he could touch, just like my mom, as long as she could touch, she can swim. <laughs> Get her away from her comfort zone or get Cole away, now he can swim now, but if we got him away from his comfort zone, what would happen? Fear would try to grip him. And all of a sudden, that swimming that he knows how to do goes out the door. Y'all follow me? And so I remember one time, because I told my wife, I said, I'm not taking him for me to pay them, for me to say, point to the wall, Cole. Where's the wall, Cole? Good point to the wall, Cole. Okay, Cole, we're going to grab the wall. Where's the wall, Cole? Grab the wall, Cole. Good, grab the wall. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, Cole, we're going to kick and dig and kick. So I, 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 y'all see, I, I can teach it now. I can teach it. I should start my own swim class because I, I've been in there because my wife, she's the one that won the swim class, but she never got in the water with them kids. So I had to be the one that betrayed their trust and put them under the water and I'm paying somebody else for me to do this to my kids and she's just there enjoying the sun and I'm in the water getting scratched up because them kids are strong. <laughs> daddy, ugh, daddy. And that was Kizia. Her voice got real deep and she was fighting me and all kinds of different stuff and I wanted to cast the devil out of her. Don't you take that voice with me. <laughs> and so anyways, but with Cole... I remember I'm taking him, and this is at the pool by our house, and I'm taking him. He said, Daddy, don't take me out deep. I said, Cole? I said, it's okay. And he's freaking out. He's just like going berserk and all this different stuff. And finally, I took him and I shook him. Not too much. Like, not. You got to be careful these days. You know what I'm saying? You got to be careful these days. I, I nudged him. I said, I said, Cole! I said, do you know that I love you? He said, yes. I said, now, do you think I would let you drown? No. I said, exactly. I am right here with you. What was I doing in his moment of torment? I'm having to remind him of my love for him. I didn't just point out my ability. See, because a lot of believers know that God, oh, I know that God is able, but you don't trust his love. Because not only, does, not only did, did I care for my son affectionately, but I cared for him watchfully as well. So anytime they were in the pool when they could not swim, I was watchful. Even though it may have felt to them that I was at a distance, yet I knew just how close I needed to be so that if anything went down, because I'm watchful and because I affectionately care for them, if anything went down, I still am able to reach them and pull them up. Believers, this is the same thing. God cares for us affectionately and he cares about us watchfully. And so though you may go through a season, because it's easy to stay in this season of comfort, to just go in the shallow end, but God don't want you staying in the shallow end forever. Because at some point you could fall in. At some point, something could happen where it causes you to trip and fall in the deep end, and you better know how to swim. 
Are y'all with me? And so the thing is, is when you know the love that he has for you, that he's watching you watchfully, it makes it easier to cast your cares upon him. That means even for your children, as I said before. Every time I say that, it gets a little bit more quiet. You are not supposed to carry on the concerns of your children. I'm not saying that you don't, that you don't ever, like you, you're not, um, how do we, you're not watchful, exactly. You know, uh, my mom, <laughs> my mom used to, I don't even know if she changed yet. My mom could not sleep until she knew everybody was in the house. And so prom night, prom night, I'm, I'm out and church the next day, but my mom, she is not sleeping. And this is before we had, I mean, my dad let me use his, I mean, he let me take his cell phone, but that was just for show because it was 75 cents a minute. <laughs> and he was like, boy, you ain't going to use that phone <laughs> unless there's an emergency. So I couldn't just call to say, I'm good. I, mean, I probably did it one time, 75 cents. Okay. <laughs> Eyes alive, mom. <laughs> but the thing is, is that, um, you know, she, she would not be able to um, sleep unless you know, she knew where everybody was. Now, time evolved to where now it was just about, she, she just, as I got older, she said, son, just for common courtesy. And she wanted to teach me too about, like even as far as, um, as far as uh, when I get married, like, son, you wanna let your wife know where, where you are and all those different things. Not because she's in fear, but just out of common courtesy, right? So of course I, I learned those things. But the thing is, is that, we don't carry the cares, because here's the thing, even if you mess up Come on. with your kids, you know, God still has the power to fix them. Yeah. Yeah. God still has enough love to help them. That even, because here's the thing, sometimes we think, oh, well, you had good parents, you had this, you had that. Guys, my parents made mistakes. I would like to think that my wife and I are good parents, but we still make mistakes. There's times we mess up, but my trust is in God, that God, even if I jack them up, you can fix them because he actually cares about them more than I care about them. And he doesn't want me to carry any anxiety, any worries, any concerns. He wants me to cast the whole of my care upon him. Why? Because he cares about me affectionately and cares about me watchfully. So last week we talked about this and we went with it backwards, that because he cares about me, I cast all my cares upon him. And I cast all my cares upon him because, and, and, and cast my cares upon him, he exalts me in due time because I've learned to humble myself under his mighty hand or his way of doing things or his way of loving me. You with me? Because again, pride will try to hinder you from receiving the love that God has for you. Pride will try to tell you that you have to deal with this yourself, that you got you to gotta take care of your stuff. You this, you that. Let me read. Um, I'm closing right now. Oh, glory to God. Y'all doing all right? I sure am loving this. Praise God. Uh, 1 John 4, 18. 1 John 4, 18. I want to read it. Well, actually, let's look at Jesus. Let's look at verse 16 first. I'm going to read this in the New King James first, but then I want to do verse 18 in the Amplified Classic. It says this. It says, and we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Verse 17, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have, what? Boldness in the day of judgment, because as he, what? As he is, so are we in this world. Let me read verse 18, but I want to read it in the Amplified Classic. It reads it this way as they get ready to switch it out. It says, there is no fear in love. Dread does not exist, but full-grown, complete, perfect love. Sorry, I just tried to get fancy with this and I changed my thing. So, perfect, but full-grown, complete, perfect love. 
turns fear out of doors and expels every trace of terror. For fear brings with it the thought of punishment. You see that? Fear brings with it the thought of punishment. And so he who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love, is not yet grown into love's complete perfection. Did y'all see that? And so the thing is, you have to let his love penetrate every broken place, every dry place. His love will heal every single wound. His love never will leave you or forsake you. Uh, there's no fear. His, his love is greater than your circumstance. His love is greater than your problem. His, his love is greater than your addiction. His love is greater than your entanglement. His love, the love of Christ is greater than any barrier that can be put up. His love is greater than any weapon of the enemy. This is why Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Prayer, supplication with thanksgiving, that's communion with your Father. So in other words, it's not the panic praying. It's not the, oh God, should I go to you better? You know, no, no, no. With thanksgiving. Prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Now, why would Paul say that? He says, be anxious for nothing. You mean I can't be anxious for nothing? Well, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to, with prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, I'm going to let my request be made known unto God. But some people just want to request. But see, getting to know him and communing with him and saying, Lord, I'm so... I'm so thankful. Well, how can I be thankful? To Lord, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that you blessed me with these kids, that you trusted me with these children. Lord, I'm so thankful uh, for, for the house that I have over my head. I'm so thankful for the life that I live. I'm so thankful. And you're, you're, you're going through and you're thinking about, some of you may need to make a list of stuff, and I mean it. Take this assignment, write some stuff down that you're grateful for, that you're thankful, the things that God has done in your life, the things that you currently have. Why am I saying that? Because it shifts your thinking off of the problem. And how does anxiety come? It comes from thinking on the stuff that you shouldn't be thinking on. It comes from meditating on things that may not even exist. And so if I can't be anxious, what should I do? In everything. By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Philippians 4, 6, verse 7 goes on to say, And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, verse 8, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if anything that is praiseworthy, anything that is, that is worthy of meditating on, think on these things. So as we think on the things, as we meditate on these things, as we, at, at the things that are, that are full of virtue, the things that are true, the things that are just, what happens is it gets you to that place of where your heart is guarded, your mind is guarded, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, it's, it, it fills you up. Yeah. So as a result, you won't give in to the fear because love that is perfected casts out all. So just like with Cole, I had to remind him, son, I love you. It, it, it created in him a confidence. Though the fear was still trying to linger around, guess what? He was able to swim. Because he thought to himself, my dad does love me. And my dad won't let me drown. So even if I try to drown, he's not going to let me drown. Because I care for him watchfully. I care for him affectionately. That even if you do something stupid, as long as I'm around. And here's the thing, Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. As long as I'm around, I'm not going to let you fall. I wonder how many things we're missing out on because we don't even realize that we're in pride. Thinking that we have to carry this stuff ourselves. 
Oh, Lord, no, you can have the big stuff, but the little stuff I'm going to hold on to. No, no, no. All. He wants you to carry none of it. This does not mean that you just, because some people are like, oh, see, like lazy people like this because they're like, well, I ain't going to do nothing. I ain't going to... I ain't going to look for a job or, or nothing, you know. Mom, you heard what Pastor said. No, no, no. You, t- you handle your business, but you just don't get into anxiety about it. Lord, I'm doing my part. I'm so glad that your favor is upon my life. I'm so glad that you love me enough to, to open doors for me. Glory to God. But it's from a place of love, of his love for you. Is this making sense? Choose to not carry a single ounce of care. If this building came under fire, I'm not going to get worried. For real, Pastor? For real. Would I be tempted to? I sure would be tempted to. What point in making being worried if it's already done? Lord, I'm going to cast that upon you. Because that's toxic. That's against his will. He wants us to cast all of our cares. But why? Because he cares for us. You see how it's all rooted in the love that he has for us? Was anybody blessed by this today? Anybody believes that God cares about you affectionately, cares about you watchfully? That means even the tough stuff, even the difficult things that seems like you can't do and there's no way that it'll be done. I want to say to you that with God all things are possible. But you just got to put your trust in him and his love. Work the word of God because the word does work. But don't do it from a place of where you're, I'm trying. No, 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 do it from a place of, I'm loved. And he gave me these scriptures, and they work. And so I'm not doing it trying to get God to do something. I'm doing it because I'm activating stuff that belongs to me. Because my father who loved me provided for me through his son, Jesus Christ. 